Welcome to Hope Today. I'm so excited because where have you been all my life? I'm so glad you've tuned. We've been waiting for you right here on this wonderful set of Hope Today. And listen, we are truly in the end times. And you know what? There is still hope today. I'm J. Anthony Gilbert. I'm here with the wonderful one and only Anna Fry and the wonderful Matt Cogley. I am so excited because we are going to get into a topic that I believe is really relevant for this hour. I know. We're just so excited for this conversation today. It's a great one for your Friday. Today we're going to dive deep into the person of Jesus Christ. Yes. If you've ever prayed for fresh revelation of who he is, today is your day. Our guest, Dr. Steve Foss, wants to take you on a journey to know the heart of your Savior. Dr. Steve says nothing can even come close to the transformation of the human heart that takes place through the pure, deep, and intimate revelation, knowledge of the person of Jesus Christ. Ooh, guys, I tell you what, growing up as a Christian, and then beginning to study the word and meet with God and get deeper and deeper revelation of who Jesus is, is such a powerful, life-changing thing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, I'm just thinking about, you know, obviously, you know, the Bible talks about how we're made in the image of Christ. And I love this topic today when we're talking about Jesus. I mean, the more I get to know Jesus, the more in return I end up being like him. Yes. You know, we did this series in church not too long ago about like Mike. I don't know if you ever watched the movie Like Mike, you know. And um, when he put on these shoes, he was like Michael Jordan. Oh. You know, he took on the characteristics of Michael Jordan and it was life changing. But I believe that's kind of like the word of God. You know, we, we implement the word of God in our lives and we become more and more like Jesus, which Pastor Jay, like you said, I mean, we need it in the time like today, right? To be more and more like Jesus. We really do. And it's so exciting because I believe this revelation that you're about to get is getting ready to blow your mind. And you know what? In these hours that we're living in, there's so many perilous things going on. It's understanding who he is yeah. that is going to give us the grace and the strength in order to be able to stand against the evil of this day. But we do have a scripture for him, yes. Pastor Matt. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so it's, this is right out of Revelation. And what a proper way to start off in Revelation with chapter 1, yeah. verse 1, right? It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant, John. You know, I think a lot of times, okay, when we think about the book Revelation, people think doom and gloom, right? And they think the rapture. But I love how this introduction is. It's about Jesus. Right. And Pastor Jay, I know you've been getting just downloads from heaven. I would love for you to just start us off. What, what sure. do you think here? Well, you know, I think it's so powerful. We always see this revelation of Christ, and we always look from Matthew to John. Because we take a look at, you know, he's the one laying on the cross and the bloody Jesus mm -hmm. and his arms nailed. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But you know what? There's, that's not who he is. Yeah. That was who he needed to be to redeem us. Yeah. But who he is, he said, listen, don't get it twisted because that's not who's coming back. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. who had to die for you. He came as the suffering lamb. Yeah. My good yeah. God. Yeah. But he's coming as the returning king. Yes. Oh, and so he, so he shows up to John on the Isle of Patmos, and he says, let me show you, John, who I was. And you yeah. remember the story where he was there at the Last Supper. He takes John, puts his head on his bosom, and he's yeah. laying there. And we think that's the Jesus that's coming back. But it's the revelation in chapter 1, mm. where the Bible says that his eyes were as a flame of fire, that his hair was white as wool, that his feet were like bronze refined in the fire, yeah. that his voice was like the sound of many waters. Uh, all of this was who Jesus was. And you yeah. saw a little bit of it at certain times. Remember when he went to Mount of Transfiguration? Yep. He went in there and all of a sudden he became white and said, let me give you a little dose of who I am. <laughs> he was so full of the glory. He is the glory that it came out from time to time. Remember when they came to get him after he came out of the Garden of Gethsemane? He comes out of there and he said, are you, you Jesus? He says, I am. They all fell back. Right. And he said, he just wanted to show us a little bit. Said, now don't get it twisted. I might be here suffering today. But who is coming back to rule and reign is the Jesus that we're about to see in Revelation chapter 1. That's who's coming back. That's who's got your back. That's your healer, your deliverer. That is the one whose uh, the government is on his shoulders. All of that is the Jesus that we are serving and we're about to see him as he is. Let's go. Ooh, I know, go. that's right. We're getting the fire started. <laughs> so today we're excited for the opportunity to get fresh revelation of the purpose and person of Jesus Christ. 
in his new book, Looking Unto Jesus. Dr. Steve Foss unpacks dozens of incredible descriptions of Jesus found in the book of Revelation. He joins us today to share the ones that have been most powerful for him, along with others that could freshly impact your faith today. Dr. Steve, welcome to Hope Today. Oh, it's so great to be with you, Hannah. Oh, are you feeling the energy? Like we're ready for you to just keep it rolling by sharing with us your I'm take ready. I'm on that. Let's go. Let's Christian. go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. So share it. Share what's on your heart. You know, it's one of the most amazing things. I love the fact in the book of Revelation, you know, most people look at it. They're kind of intimidated. Uh, a lot of times we think it's about mainly about the suffering and persecution of the saints. But in over 400 verses in Revelation, only 12 deal with the persecution or suffering of the saints. It is those first five words, the revelation of the person of Jesus Christ. And I love especially what it says right there at the beginning. It says, which God gave him. The Father sent Jesus to go reveal to his servant not only what was about to take place, but first who he is. If you think about it, the book of Revelation predominantly was written for a generation, an end time generation that was going to face the most intense season the world would ever see. And the first thing the father said was, Jesus, you need to go reveal yourself more because it's the revelation of who he is will give us the strength to endure in the battles that we're facing that are coming ahead. So we certainly don't have to look very far to see that we are facing some tremendous battles personally in our nation, in the world. And so start us off by sharing a revelation of Jesus that has been most meaningful to you. Well, there's so many in there. There's 30 descriptions in Revelation chapter one. Uh, but I love one of the elements of, there's two things. There's the him who loved us and shed his blood and then also his eyes were like flames of fire. And those to me speak about the divine motive why God came. The eyes of fire, sometimes we look at it as judgment, and it can be that. Whenever you're studying the Bible, you always got to look at what's called the law of first mention. The first time through the principles mentioned in Scripture, the first time fire is associated with God is when the Bible says that our God is consuming fire, a jealous God. And the jealousy of God speaks of the intensity of his passion and love for us. And he so loves us that he wants every single part of us, all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our emotions, all of our affections. So the eyes of fire first speaks of the intensity of God's love. You know, I love in the book of Solomon, which is really allegorical of Christ in the church, you have Christ the loved, and he looks at the Shulamite woman, and he makes a statement so powerful. He said, with just one look, you ravish my heart. Wow. Think about it. God yeah. is going to ravish, literally become overwhelmed with emotion. Wow. So God is revealed to us when we stop, even in our weakness, even in our battles and struggles and, our, and the intensity of our circumstances, when we pause even for a and just look up to him yeah. and just say, I love you. God said, I am overwhelmed with emotion. Wow. I am, my heart is ravished. When you even stop, especially when you're suffering, especially when you're going through confusing circumstances, and you stop and say, despite all this, I love you, Jesus. Wow. He says, my heart is overwhelmed with emotion and passion. It's as my eyes are Fire, fiery flame of passionate desire for you. Oh my God. When you start is that way, oh, it starts changing everything. <laughs> oh, it really does. So share with us sort of a little bit of your personal journey. Like we can feel your passion. If somebody is at home watching and they're like, man, I wish I had that passion. Tell us how you got to this place. Well, you know, I, I got saved May 2nd, 1986. I was a drug addict and alcoholic. Somebody invited me to a university campus meeting and the man of God just started quoting scriptures. You know, I want to say something. Guys, don't ever underestimate the power of the word of God. Yeah, the right. power is in the word. And he quoted about 35 scriptures in a row. I don't know anything about the Bible. And yet it was hitting me deep in my heart. 
he called for an altar call and I didn't want to go forward. I was nervous, but a number of people went down front and I waited for about 40 minutes as he continued to pray for people. And I finally said, God, if this is really you, if this is not phony or fake, have that preacher call me out of the audience. Well, I didn't know about the word of knowledge. Within 30 seconds, he called me down out of a crowd of 300, prayed for me. The power of God hit me. I literally collapsed to the ground. I was pinned to the floor for 40 minutes under what was like a river of pure love and pure power. I heard the voices of millions singing an indescribable song. And I saw the bodily presence of Jesus come and hover over my body, and he was smiling. When I sat up at that for 40 minutes later, I was tears of joy and love were pouring down my, on my face. I was instantaneously delivered from five years of drug addiction, wow. never went back. And from that day forward, I just became so passionately in love with him. I just want to be with him more than anything else. Wow, that is so powerful, Dr. Steve. You know, as you're talking, I'm really getting stirred over here because I believe there's about to be a wave of this revelation you're talking about that is going to invade the earth. The church needs it more now than ever. You had an encounter leading up to this book. You had one that you just explained when you first gave your life to Jesus, but you had one right before this book. Could you talk about that? And then a follow-up question with that is, do you believe that there's about to be an encounter with Jesus in a greater way like you had that's going to happen in the body of Christ? Yeah, I'm going to go, uh, let me reverse that a little bit because the greatest revelation of Christ is coming. The Bible says that as we behold him, as in a mirror, in the glory of the Lord, we're changed into his image. And I believe when the Bible says that the, the, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory Amen. of the former house, it's going to be because the greatest revelation of Jesus wow. that we have ever seen. And then we are going to begin to reflect that glory. God is, the world is going to see the glory of God manifested on us. Isaiah 60, verse 1, prophesies that. He said, Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the yes, Lord has yes. risen upon you. And he tells us in verse 2 when that's going to happen. For darkness shall cover the earth and wow. deep darkness the people, but his glory will be seen on you. In this vision that I had, uh, actually over 20 years, I had three incredible visions that was a continuation. And at the end of the vision, it was an end-time army and end-time battle. You had the army of God gloriously, magnificently white. And then you had the hordes of hell on the other side of this massive field. Jesus was sitting on the most amazing white horse that you've ever seen in your life. And his face was set forward like flint. We begun to march forward into this incredible battle. Uh, many, many things went on that I don't have time to talk about. Some of the soldiers got hit. You know, the Bible talks about some of the strong will stumble, that they might be refined. And they got hit, they were falling back in the battle. And I was like, well, Lord, what's going to happen? But later on, I saw a wind of the Holy Spirit, and it began to blow. They, they, they looked like they were buried in shallow graves. And they, it wind began to blow and blow the dirt off, and they were revived. And I believe there's going to be a great end-time restoration of the prodigals, a restoration wow. of the fallen back and been overcome by sin, overcome by, by, by the things of the world. But when these soldiers got back up, the battle had moved. Jesus had moved forward. They started saying, he's so far away. And there were angels there saying, no, 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 he's closer than you think. Pray for supernatural eyesight. And, as, and they said, pick up their weapons. And they start picking up their weapons. These crows started and screaming at them, trying to um, eat their eyes out, which is what crows do. I didn't know that until I saw the vision. And they were screaming, shame, shame, shame. Shame on you, you fell. Shame on you, you you, you stumbled, shame on you. And the angel spoke to them and said, no, 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 focus on Jesus and what he has focused on. That will protect you from the shame. And as they did, they were strengthened and encouraged. And I saw Jesus looking forward. At first, I thought he was looking at the hordes of hell, but he was looking beyond them. Then he, behind them was a sea of billions of lost souls. I thought he was looking at the end time harvest. But then I saw the on that, and I, I asked in the vision, what is he looking at? And a voice spoke to me and said, the end of the age. And then I looked down, I saw behind, at the very, very far away, a white throne, an empty white throne. And I realized it was the throne. Now, folks, listen, when Jesus comes back,
back to this earth, rule and reign here. We're not just going to get raptured and spend eternity in heaven playing harps and kind of bored. Jesus is coming back here yes. in a human frame. He's the Come first on. born among the dead. Jesus, the greatest mystery. Jesus forever will live in a human frame. Yes. That's why it refers in these descriptions him as the son of man. You know, 85 times in the book of Revelation. Or uh, sorry, 85 times Jesus calls himself the son of man. Only seven times he calls himself the son of God. Jesus is coming back fully God in this glorified, resurrected body, the same kind of resurrected body you and I are going to. This supernatural, fully human, yet fully spirit body. Hallelujah. He's coming back to this earth to rule and reign here on this earth, and we will rule and reign with him. Mm. I mean, it's so powerful. And uh, earlier you used the word behold, to behold him. And I just, I love that word because beholding means to, to re fix, to set ourselves aside from all the busyness and the chaos of the world and truly behold the person, the character, the purpose of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like for so many uh, Christians for the church, we're finding ourselves sort of in this maybe lethargic, distracted place from really digging into our faith, which is what the enemy wants. How would you encourage somebody today that just feels like they have that lackluster faith um, to really dig in and behold Jesus? You know, the Bible says where there is no vision, people perish. And one of the challenges is so much of the preaching of the church today is about now. My blessings now, my comfort now, my healing now, my how to live a better life now. And, the, and those things are important. But if you really look at these descriptions of Jesus and see everything there was focused on eternal focus and eternal hope. You know, one of the most famous scriptures in Jeremiah 29, 11 says, God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not evil, uh, with a future and a hope. Now, we always begin in this term, the future and the hope God has for me. But God was speaking about an eternal hope, a destiny and eternity with him that is so much more glorious and spectacular and amazing than, than anything on this earth. You know, if you go to a tombstone in a seminary, cemetery and you see uh, – well, some seminaries are tombstones too, but we, that's another thing. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, 1936 to 2023, right? And there's that dash in between. That dash is your entire life here on the earth. But eternity forever with him, we will continue to grow in the knowledge and depth of him. So he says, I know I have a future of hope for you. Then he says right after that, then you will call upon me and I will answer. You will see and you will find me, search for me with all your heart. See, I believe focus on the future, the eternal future. When we are changed into his image, when we take on our new resurrected body, when we are going to rule and reign with him, when you allow that to consume your heart and mind, that is what's going to cause you to want to cry out to him. That's what's going to cause you to want to stay focused on him because you don't want to lose that. You know, you, I love Revelation 2 and 3, God says multiple times, says, hold fast what you have. Yeah. Don't let anybody steal your hope. Don't let anybody steal your joy. But the joy is not the temporary things here on this earth. The joy is the eternity with him. And when we're focused on that, as we behold him and see that where we're going and what we're going to be in him, that is what keeps the fire burning. Because if you focus on the circumstances now, it'll, it'll suck the life out of you. But if you focus on him, who he is, and that we are going to be like him for eternity, that is what will give you incredible strength. You know, Dr. Steve, we've got about a minute left here. I want to know if you could just take a minute. I'm sensing in my heart there's a lot of people that need this revelation of Jesus Christ. You mentioned about the gross darkness that's covering yeah. the earth. A lot of people are consumed with fear. Would you just yeah. pray that not only would the spirit of fear be annihilated, that hope would be lifted, and that this revelation of Jesus Christ would embolden us to stand and even speak into the darkness in, these genera in this generation that we're living in? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, as Paul prayed for the Ephesian church, I pray right now that the spirit of wisdom and revelation, yes. 
of insight into the mysteries and secrets yes. in the deep and intimate knowledge of you will flood the eyes of their understanding with the light of the knowledge of the glory of God as revealed in the face of Jesus. Lord, let us become so consumed with a passion for you, so consumed every day, seeing you a little bit more, that our spirit man cries out, holy, 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 utterly transcendent. You are so amazing, God, that that focus on you, Father, as you anoint their minds to see you, will give them strength and courage to endure the suffering of this life, for we know it only endures for a moment. I bless them right now, God. Reveal Jesus to them in a deeper way. Amen. 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 Well, Dr. Steve, thank you so much for your passion, for your fire, for your love for Jesus. Uh, we, again, I just want to say your book is 30 Days of Transformation, Looking Unto Jesus. Such a powerful uh, book to transform our lives. So thank you again for your time. Amen. Thank you. Wonderful to see you guys. And we'll be back with more Hope Today right after this. Cornerstone Television has believed in the power of prayer since its inception 44 years ago. We invest heavily in our prayer line to provide you with 24-7 personal prayer, knowing it brings breakthrough, healing, and wisdom. Last year alone, we received over 65,000 prayer calls. And if you have partnered with us, thank you so very much. And when you give this month, I am so excited to share with you my new book, Praying on Another Level. It's a 30-day journal to take your prayer life to a new dimension in God. You see, prayer is how we separate good ideas from God ideas. It's how we unlock the door to revelation, and it's where we get our strength to build up our spirit man to hear from God throughout our day. All that and so much more. So call us now at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org forward slash donate to request your copy. It is time to take your prayer life to another level. Now listen, if you, got, if you haven't gotten your hand on that book, you need to call right now and get on that and sow a seed into this ministry because I believe prayer is vital yeah. to what we're talking about. A revelation of Jesus Christ to embolden us. There is truly darkness covering the earth like the waters are covering the sea. But you know what? The glory of God is getting ready to come and there is a new revelation of Jesus Christ that is waiting for us, Pastor Matt. Yeah. And I believe our focus is vital yeah. for what God is ready to do in this yeah. season. You know, I love where you're taking it there before we wrapped up with Dr. Steve that's, you know, there's, there's a fear that's consuming the world and it's crazy. And the way I like to look at it is it's just a distraction. Right. You know, fear is such a, a tactic right. to get us distracted from the authority that we've been given, from uh, just the calling that God has in each and every one of our lives. And I, I okay, so I can't help but to think about the story of Peter. You know, we know this growing up. It's a childhood story of getting out of the boat. Isn't it amazing when Jesus called him out, he immediately started walking on water. Wow. You know, it didn't take time. He immediately started doing the impossible. And then what, we, what I love what Dr. Steve says, where's your focus? Yeah. Focus on Jesus, the author, the finisher, yeah. right? So that's where our strength is, right? The same power that the defeated death, hell, and the grave is in us through mm. Jesus. So I love this. It's when Peter took his focus off of Jesus. Right? That's when he began to sink. It doesn't say, you know, we, you know, obviously we know when we keep our focus on Jesus, it doesn't say that there's not going to be chaos. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be wind and waves. It's whenever we take our eyes, our focus off of him, the prize off of where our direction should be is when we start to stumble, is when we start to fall into fear, Anna. Yes. But I believe that when you keep your focus straight on Jesus, on the prize, man, you begin to walk in authority in the wind, in the waves. They might be distractions, but they don't phase you in this lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. See, Jesus is the object of our faith. So when we are focused on who Jesus is, on his power, on his promises, on who we are to him, his great love for us, then our faith is inspired, it grows, and we are able to withstand any circumstance that comes our way. It's interesting, you talked about Peter. I was reading another story of Peter that you might be familiar with, where he was out all night trying to catch fish, right? He was a fisherman, and he was in the morning, he was exhausted, he had been out, and he had not caught 
any fish. So he was discouraged, he went back to shore, he was cleaning his nets, and then Jesus showed up and told him to go back out again. Think about all the feelings, the emotions that Peter was, he was discouraged, he was tired, he just wanted to go home, get some good breakfast, find some fish to cook up for that breakfast. But he said, Jesus, because you said so, I will go back out. And when Peter went back out, he caught so much fish that it overwhelmed the boat, overwhelmed the nets. He could not even contain it. And I just wonder today if Jesus is saying a promise to your heart. If you can't hear those promises, get into scripture because he has promised you victory. He has promised you strength. He has promised you comfort. He has promised you purpose in this earth. He's ready to display his glory in you and through you and on you. As Dr. Steve said, we are the glory of Jesus Christ in this earth because we are the church, the body of Jesus. We are to reveal Christ to those around us so that more will know who Jesus is and that they will bow down to their knees and praise him and give their lives to him. Amen. That's so good, Anna. You know, and I believe there's many of you watching right now that are battling. I feel the darkness invading the earth, but I'm so glad that you can tune in to shows like Hope Today to be able to give you hope in this day. And listen, don't you dare drop your head. I know things are looking crazy in the economy. We look at our school system and what's happening there, the collapses that are happening all around us. But listen, Jesus is arising. He didn't just get up on the third day. He's getting up on the last day, ladies and gentlemen. And he's coming back for a bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That's me and you. So I just pray today that the boldness of Almighty God will come alive within you. That the revelation of Jesus Christ as illustrated and demonstrated and written by the prophet John the Beloved on the Isle of Patmos in 90 AD come alive in your heart and in your life. Greater is he that is within yes. you than he that is within the world. And if you're battling with fear, know that our prayer lines are always available. 888-665-4483. The spirit of fear is annihilated. annihilated. Boldness is coming alive because Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Amen. That's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And ladies and gentlemen, that is hope.